fired. No way is that that on season one, episode two. This time Fire. we're gonna try it in no dub because I'm curious. Why would I lie? Honest to God, that's my real name, Ken Takakura. Ah, no. How much are you in love with the image and how much are you in love with the name? How much do you love associations? Let me gobble your dog. Haven't you gobbled enough dongs already? How many dongs can you gobble in one night? <laughs> uh, Does she still have his weenie? So much better. I'm making a new rule. You're never to say your name again. Okay. Oh, interesting. What does that mean? Why can't I say my name? What a night. Occult, so your new name's Okaron. Why? <laughs> she just got all the way named him Otaku. Why not? I guess I'm okay with it. Sounds he like loves you're it. More than okay with it. Ocarine. What? No, I hate it. It's a great feeling if you get a nickname from someone, face. depending on the nickname. <laughs> I knew it. You look happy. Ocarine. Yeah, it's attention. Someone giving you a nickname is somebody really caring about you, or really, really hating you. <laughs> but at least they're paying attention to you. That is huge for Otaku Chan. Now I want to call him by his full government name. <laughs> what is his name again? Ken Takakura. Farting at me? What kind of pig are you? Oh, we're already at that stage of the relationship. Wow, we're moving fast. Farting in front of each other. It's morning already. Those are the best nights. Turbo Granny won't pop out now. I Those are the best first dates. <gasps> Is that true? I'm absolutely sure, and I'm basing that on absolutely nothing. You're coming to my place. Whoa, this is moving fast. Hello. Dun 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 dun. I think they're a lot more similar than they appear. Or maybe they just appear very similar. I mean, they're both outcasts in sort of different ways. I mean, we saw that she had friends, but she's not your typical, what are they, middle school, high school? She had a very odd caretaker, which is a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because it gives you a special insight into the world and also like a meta insight into the world because you realize how people don't understand differences in the world, which of course also can be painful because kids only method of gaining any leverage in the world is through attack. So they're just looking for anything that's slightly out of the ordinary. So then the recipient of the attacks is torn between like knowing that nothing is wrong with what they're doing you know like maybe it's just a weird lunch or something or strange clothes or the fact that you have 13 cats but you're also a kid and you live and die by your social environment one positive that starts from that is if it doesn't drown you you start to gain that awareness and like develop that independence of thought which i think is one of the most important things to come away with as, a, as an adolescent also i'm presuming she's hot so she'll have a lot of attention from from boys but like often not what she wants probably not anything that's meaningful especially since we've seen her capacity for depth he has been branded a loser presumably because of his appearance and stature and interests i'm guessing he's an only child and at first i I was thinking we've seen more of her positive qualities than his since we, we kind of got more of her internal monologuing. But we did see that my dude is brave. I mean, he was a little bit weird in his approach to Momo, but most kids will just let that go and that would be it. And then they would think about what they wish they had said for the next three decades. But they're both different. They're both thinking. They're both independent. They're both a little bit lonely. They're both open-minded to each other. Like what I said before about how it forces you to think independently. They're already at a more advanced stage of being able to blast through the superficialities of interactions and seeing what people really are and what matters. So already I'm really enjoying the chemistry which is pretty cool considering it's only the first couple minutes of episode two and the good news is now that we have powers we never need to go back to school house, so watch out she almost killed my last boyfriend huh? wait you're telling me now whoops she's really adept at using her powers despite having had them for like five minutes it's amazing grandma really was a great great person she definitely got the better grandma of the two Momo's grandma gave her psychic powers oh Ken Takaraka's grandmother ate his weenie. You can come in. Uh, are you sure it's safe too? We'll find out. <laughs> Do it for science. Oh my god, what happened to your hair? <laughs> Just noticed. Like an old lady firm. <laughs> Check for your weenie for the love of God. Grandma! Where? Cat when? Fortune cat when? Oh well. Come up to my room. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Hold it. Close the door so I can change. Oh my god, it's heaven. <laughs> I thought it couldn't happen during the day. God, this is such a pain. You basically have to stay together at all times, forever, until you exercise granny. They're my sweats, but they fit baggy. Thank you. So what's the feeling? This is already so intimate. Anymore. Huh? What? How do you think? Ah! Don't remind me, yeah. Turn around. He's overwhelmed for so many reasons. No way, is it really gone? Is this a metaphor for the journey to manhood? <laughs> I would take this to my grave. Like nobody would know. You already know too much. Me daring you was the only way to make you shut up about it. I guess I didn't want to miss my chance. 
That's that bravery. I wanted to have a friend. That's overwhelmingly sweet. I'm sort of floored by how innocent that is. Here I am, like, thinking about it from the romance and girl angle. Because God knows that's what I would be thinking if I was that age. <laughs> but no, he just, he just wanted a friend. That makes me feel kind of bad <laughs> about who I am. That's why I was so desperate to talk to you. Yeah, he did it in a weird way, but like... You know his heart was racing at that moment. You live in a I can totally feel different it. World than I do. But they're close. Yeah, like I said, I think they're closer than they both think. When this is over, you can go back to ignoring me. I won't mind. The only problem with you is that you think like that. You think you know about how people feel. And then go jumping to conclusions. You want to know why you don't have friends? It's because you push everyone away. I mean, that's not exactly how I would phrase that, but there's something to it. Something really unfortunate happens sometimes where people face rebuke and maybe initially it has nothing to do with them or whatever. Maybe there actually is something a little bit off-putting about them, but like for God's sakes, they're kids, right? But especially as a kid, you don't really understand and you don't know how to make sense of it. So it's really easy to start to overgeneralize and extrapolate the extent to which that will be received from people. And also there's just so many variables that you can't wrap your head around. It's confusing. And so therefore it's more terrifying and difficult to approach than it actually is. So what can happen is that sometimes it starts to affect behavior. When those people enter into a new interaction that's totally neutral and maybe with even great people, they're already a little bit affected by the anticipation of something negative. So their guard is up. They're wearing a mask. They're trying to give like the right answers that they think will engineer the result they're looking for. But actually to people who are decent and quality people, what they're probably looking for is what the person is genuinely and an honest interaction that's playful. And those sort of guards are counterproductive to that end. And so the cycle deepens even further. In this exact situation, I get where he's coming from. This is based on his experiences, but it's the worst thing to say to Momo. And like only someone who can really see the big picture and be zoomed out and see it for what it is, which is just like his fear, will be able to kind of get past that. But also it's kind of taxing to do so. And over time, if that behavior doesn't change, people become disincentivized to continue to interact. If everything you say to someone, even when you're doing that in, in a positive light, is met with them getting upset or them getting fearful or some unexpected emotion erupts out of nowhere, you're sort of like, huh? And it creates a strain and strain is the death of friendship. This is one of those tropes, I think especially in American media, that I get where it's coming from to an extent, but also think it's kind of framed incorrectly, where the popular kids are the mean ones. In my experience with a lot of reflection, a lot of the times the popular kids were really nice, you know, but they're also kids and they're just following their instinct and hanging out with other people that are fun to hang out with. So you're not going to make a lot of unnatural effort arbitrarily to enter into someone's dark world. Actually, I think there's a similar misconception with the whole idea of nice guys finish last. Of course, sometimes jerks get confused for being ultra confident. But I think what it actually is, is something closer to honesty finishes first. And so that doesn't always look like an overabundance of friendliness and an overabundance of platitudes and always trying to say the right thing. In fact, people who are always trying to please and impress are often very unnice, not nice. I won't ignore you because you tell me to. Who will I talk to about weird paranormal things? That's nice of her. Real talk though, I will ignore you if every time we have this conversation, you try to get me to push you away. Bitch. What? Ah! That was Granny. Wow. That was rough. That was strong. That's not her. I've never heard that doorbell before. What? Why would the doorbell change? The house had two doorbells installed. One it's a spirit. Humans. Maybe it's a cat. Oh, a fortune cat. I didn't put the talisman back. You doomed us all. Where the hell is it? Did it leave? You we don't know anything about there. spirits except for like Wiener Granny. Who knows? What is happening? This is- wait, what? I don't- how do he- how does he leave with the wooden walls? Somebody put you in their domain. The gate's embedded in the wall, and if I can't get out, I'll be incinerated. Well, it was nice knowing you. He's regretting calling her the B word earlier. What the- Why is it bleeding? You're bleeding. Oh, you're a psychic. I mean, it's not only natural that you use your psychic powers to nosebleed. Well, not now. Oh, this is the cur this is some kind of curse. We have lost all saturation. Oh hi, hello. These ghosts in the show are not subtle. You are bad humans. Okay. You did not keep your promise. Okay. Oh, this is one of those boss strategies where you try to like lure them into doing area damage. This is very video game boss, like uh, Shadows of the Colossus, is that the game? And the Demon's Souls series. No 
Why is everyone obsessed with bananas? And what are you talking about? That's the same... No, the bananas are not the bananas. I mean, that would be the obvious thought, right? I wouldn't be saying that if I thought bananas were that banana. The aliens in the last episode were demanding her banana, which doesn't make any sense, as far as I can tell. There's something else that is a banana. I don't know, uh, maybe somehow we got to banana from Soul. That's no spirit, that's an alien! What? There's no doubt about it. That hood. It's a Flatwoods monster! Okay, yeah, we saw the little, like, technological line things, the squigglies. Later, they were seen here, in Japan, and Yamanashi. They're usually three meters tall, but this one's bigger! This alien also is a fan of Japanese culture. I read studies that said people who see psychic phenomena also see stuff like UFOs! There's a connection. Maybe there's a common core. Thank you. to point to ghosts and aliens having something in common! And the aliens from yesterday sent him? Those stubborn jerks! There's no way I can use my power to fight that thing and keep a lid on your curse. Um... Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Let Granny loose. This is getting old! That's not great. Huh? Dang it! We can fix this, right? That reminds me of the movie The Substance. You know what you gotta do, Ken Takaraka. I'll fight that thing. My boy's brave, for Let real. The curse take me. Look at this dude. You wanna do what? If it's an alien, I'm not scared of it. I need every friend I can get. In a way, it's hard to explain, I feel like, all those years of isolation. Taking a new feeling in the context of this new purpose. <laughs> He's got it. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it actually looks cool. Yeah, I'm surging with power now. Feeling pretty gloomy though. Whoa! It changed his personality! Yeah, and voice. Is this Dobby? An awkward guy, yo. <laughs> I don't know why I'm alive. For real, yo. I bet there's different phases of this. Or is it always this dude? Dodge without even thinking. Turbo granny power. Lost a finger, yo. But I'm still bummed. <laughs> So aloof, so cool. It's so cool how he doesn't care. <laughs> That's how you know he's better than everyone. All right. Came to the wrong place. I feel like I'm gonna bust apart into a million pieces. Humans are made to move that fast. That's realistic. That's something you don't like hear about that much or shows don't cover. I mean, speaking of my academia, it's one of the few. I can survive one more try. You go for its legs. I'll use my power to pull it the other way and trip the bastard. Well, that was a quick so transformation. Right now. I need to get close. Oh, he cares. Don't let it stop on me. You got that? What a drag. <laughs> no. <laughs> Exploded. Sucks. I like how this whole scene is done in black and white. Alright, you gotta do this without her control. You're going full granny. I didn't change. Well, what? You're such a pain to oh, she's still doing it. It totally cheated, and I can't let it get away with that. What are you talking about? Nothing pisses me off more than a cheater. Breaking the rules? <laughs> Interesting. Wonder what the backstory is there. You have to let the curse take me again, please! I can't stand here and watch it kill you! No, it won't. We're good to go. Some kind of psychic shield? From this position, I'm oh, she's outside out. the Tory gate! Wait, but... Does it work on aliens? Oh, right, now she can act. Wait, but does it work on aliens? <laughs> it does work on aliens. That common link between ghosts and aliens. They already feel so close, it's amazing. They're gonna realize that they're embracing each other tenderly. Is he alive? It does happen in the daytime, in the sunlight. Let me catch my breath. I swear you're so high maintenance. How do we explain this to our parents? Like the fact that we're, we sleep together now. I kind of dug the old lady for more though. Then why'd you make fun of it? Whoa! Suddenly. Same reason she gave you a nickname. Dizzy. Uh, crap. <gasps> Miss ISA! Miss ISA! Wake up! <gasps> you gotta learn to control this thing, my dude. Uh, uh, 
Not, not so good. There's others out there, right? There's others out there in the world that can do this, presumably. One more, clearly not the first. Yeah, I feel like this is a good time to introduce another character. Like Fortune Cat. Fortune Cat, who was... I mean, he was there. He's in the house, like 100 meters away. Fortune Cat answers the call. This was fun. I mean, the alien stuff is really cool. The ghost stuff is really cool. The style is really creative. Honestly, I think my favorite part of it so far and what I'm looking forward to the most and what I'm most impressed by up to this point is their dynamic. It's really cool. I want to see more of them and I like them together, which is kind of cool. Like, I imagine it could be pretty easy to get that wrong. I think it would be easy to stumble over the potential for tropes there. The fantasy of, you know, a kid who's unpopular and, and actually kind of not that likable suddenly having exclusive access to a beautiful girl but no he has a lot of heart and i understand exactly what they're both seeing in each other even though i don't think they are, are fully articulating it to themselves yet or understand it because they don't know themselves yet they don't realize that their tribulation so far and their unique difficulties which up to this point have created a lot of challenges for them are the very things that led to some of their, their awareness that leads to them being able to cut through things that are maybe less important that superficial depth you're kind of constantly swimming in as a young kid and teen i like to to a certain extent as an adult as well that lets them see something deeper in their respective course and then of course just for good measure this common adventure that they've started together